Before we start the workshop, let's do a small test. This is a saw blade half of which is clamped. Place a displacement load at the tip and then release the load. We can see the vibration of the saw blade end. Finally, the saw blade tip returns to its original undeformed position. Because this is completely elastic deformation, once the load is released, all deflection will disappear or the deformed saw blade will spring back to undeformed position. Now let's start the workshop. Please use LS Propose to build the model. Use for node shell method to create the shell mesh for the beam. Create the SBC boundary conditions and a node set which will be used to apply the displacement load. Create a linear material card. Input the steel material density, Young's modulus, and Poisson's ratio. Create a section shell card. Use full integration element formulation for the section shell card and input 3.0 mm for the shell thickness. Then update the part with the created material and section. Define a load curve. The 5 mm displacement loading time is 0.04 second and the load is hold until 0.1 second. Here the time beyond 0.5 second will not be used. Create a prescribed motion set load with the created load notes set. The load direction is in Z direction and the load type is displacement. Select the load curve we just created.
create database by check JLAT and no doubt. The output time interval is 0.1 millisecond. The output data format is binary. The JLAT will be used to check internal energy versus time history of the beam and no doubt will be used to check the beam tip displacement time evolution. Create binary D3 plot output. Use 1 millisecond for the D3 plot output time interval. Create history node set by selecting the load node set created previously. This history node set will be used by the node out output request. Now set up simulation termination time. In this case, use 0.1 second. Set the time step. Just use the default and no mass scaling will be used. Oops. I forgot to set up the prescribed motion set load death time. We need to release the load at 0.05 second. So set the load death time at 0.05 second. Now the explicit analysis model setup is completed. Save the file and run the explicit analysis. The analysis is down within one minute. We can check the D3 plot file to view animation. The cantilever beam tip is in vibration model after the displacement load is released. This can be verified by checking the tip node displacement in Z direction. We can select any tip node in the node out nodes. Now let's set up the seamless spring back analysis. 
First, set up up a part set which will be used in interface spring back seamless card. In this case, only cantilever beam spring back will be calculated. Based on LS Dyna manual, interface spring back seamless will eliminate all control implicit cards but it will use default values for control implicit auto and control implicit general cards. It will also automatically turn on the control implicit stabilization. Select the part set just created. In the NSHV, input 100 so that the element formulations, unit system, and constitutive models should not change between runs. The termination time needs to be changed to 0.05 second because spring back analysis should start immediately when the load is released. Now the seamless spring back analysis setup is completed. Save the file and run the analysis. It should be noted that implicit analysis is only supported by double precision solver. We can monitor the message file using Notepad++. Now explicit analysis is completed. Implicit analysis start immediately or seamlessly. It looks like the convergence is pretty tough. The implicit solver struggles hard to find equilibrium. After more than two minutes, the analysis is done. Now we can check the beam tip displacement time evolution. The curve looks very unnormal. We need to check the beam internal energy. It is absolute not correct. There are very large negative internal energy created after spring back.
Now we need to check the beam deformation after spring back. Wow! The elements are twisted like our glassing. But we are using full integration element formulation. There should have not our glassing issue. The most suspicious reason is the artificial stabilization energy which is negative and may cause the system error. In order to fix this issue, we need to deactivate the control implicit stabilization card. Then we save the modified model and rerun the analysis. After 2 minutes and 49 seconds, we have error termination due to the convergence failure. It should be noted that the interface spring back seamless uses very large time step. This may cause convergence. We need to reduce the initial time step defined in control implicit general card. Set the initial time as 1 millisecond, and NSBS as 50. Therefore, the time for implicit analysis is 0.05 second. Save the file and rerun the analysis. Now it only takes 41 seconds to complete the analysis. Check the beam tip node displacement. The displacement is zero after spring back which makes perfect sense. Check the internal energy of the beam. 
the beam internal energy returns to zero after spring back. This proves the spring back analysis is down well. Open the D3 plot files to check the beam deflection. The spring back completes instantly and no twisting of the beam shell elements are observed. This is the end of this workshop. Welcome to subscribe CAE training and consulting channel. Thanks for watching.